Hey, here we are. We are on today with the Morgyle and our Patricia, our lovely Patricia. So, hello, guys. Hey, hello. Well, yeah, that's like uh, yesterday or the day before was the first time I've logged into Facebook in months. So, yeah, it's man. If you if you leave that thing alone for a couple months, you just get way too much stuff to try to catch up on. But uh, yeah, luckily I saw your your message from uh, or your couple messages from months ago, and uh, yeah, I'm glad we got back in touch because it's always good to hang out with y'all uh, UK folks. Yeah, well, we're friends, aren't we, John? You know, even even though you know there's gaps in it, we've always talked for for a couple of good years now, off and on, off and on. We've talked good, a friend. Oh yeah, for shizzle. But actually, I must admit, though, the last time I spoke to you, you were on a telephone somewhere else. Was that? Christmas time. Locked away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Christmas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fun, fun. Yeah, that was one hell of a way to... Yeah, yeah, thank God. Uh, but yeah, one hell of a way to spend the holidays. And, uh, of course, you know, people people judge you for, for getting arrested and being put in jail. But, of course, it could happen to anyone um and you know of course now i'm a convicted felon because i had a pill in my pocket and so like you know people hear that oh convicted felon you know that that it drums up images of uh well you had a trial then you had to try you had to go to trial yeah oh yeah yep and um basically i had a uh public defender which you know we call them public pretenders because they don't do anything but so I'm, you know, I'm lumped in with murderers and rapists and armed robbers because I had a pill in my pocket. And so that's, you know, that's the United States for you. It is now, you know, a felony to have a pill in your pocket. So God damn, could you imagine if, uh, if they, if they passed those sort of laws during the sixties or the seventies, like, I don't think there'd be anybody left, uh, a free person. I don't think you know, people okay. realize that nobody really has rights anymore. I mean, they always think that the English have the biggest and the best, but we don't. We're so censored. So, 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 so censored. There is no freedom of. And, you know, they what they did a few years ago was, because obviously they decided that with slavery, that they'd stick something in the Slavery Act. But it doesn't talk about the people's welfare, money, care, education and all that. It's just this law saying you can't really ask anybody to help you anymore. If I ask you to help me here, then you could actually ring the police up on me. And it's been put in the Slavery Act. It's nothing to do, with, neither one are to do with each other. But really, they've got that act in now and it's law. Isn't that well, terrible? I mean, I like, think, it's terrible. I think the key, and I think, I think the key, I think the key thing to the whole slavery aspect is if it's voluntary. Like if you ask me to help you with something, and I and I voluntarily do it and don't ask for anything in return, that's fine. But the the problem is when if you ask me or you basically demand and force me with threat of violence to help you with something without compensation for my time, that would be slavery. And unfortunately, the whole modern system is set up to make everybody that participates in that system not only a slave, but a slave to help create an even more robust and uh, effective system to enslave future generations. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty messed up and, and uh, abysmal. It is, but I'm saying, you know, like you only, well, you only realise that nothing works properly when you have to use it. If you can go through life without use, losing it, you know, like benefits or going to the doctor, whatever it is, once you have to start like trying to get through it, it's just an absolute nightmare. None of it works. Yeah, I mean, you know, for, for my wife, like it took her almost five years to get disability, which she, she did end up finally getting. Um, you know, which is something that we pay pay into with our taxes. Uh, every time you get a paycheck here, it, you know, it comes right out of your paycheck. Uh, you know, Social Security, disability insurance, um, it comes right out. But when it's, you know, when it's time to actually take advantage of that uh, public benefit, as they say, uh, yeah, they make it very difficult. And, and in fact, it's, uh, it is their policy to deny everyone, uh, regardless of their injury or the validity of their claim. And so, yeah, I mean, that's that's the problem with socialism and it's the problem with bureaucracies in general that, um, yeah, they they're, they're quick to snatch up the public's money. But, uh, you know, they're, uh, John, John, you mean the globe life? You mean that life, the globe life? <laughs> 
it's all set up, yeah. isn't it, that way? Ego, and I, I mean, I said this on a hangout yesterday, or the day, when we did have our last hangout, Patricia? Day before yesterday, or Monday, Monday was it? Anyway, basically, money should have just been a medium to buy things, but it isn't. Money's now the king and the power, and if you haven't got money, nobody likes you. If you've got money, you're in. If you've got money, people respect you. And instead of respecting the people, they just respect a medium. And uh, it's that's really sad because now people are not very important. We're just like sheep or herded or it's horrible how we're treated. I think just the way it all is, I'm sorry, we're just one big experiment in someone else's game as well. The way that it usually goes too, isn't it kind of ironic that the people who center their lives around getting themselves rich are usually not very good people. You know, like if you're so shallow as to value dollars over people, then yes, you're a good capitalist. Um, although, you know, people in general tend to respect people with money more so than those without. Uh, but in fact, it is, it, it should be vice versa. Like, you know, money is not that important to me other than, yeah, we, we have to have it to pay our bills and to survive, but it's not like I, I uh, revolve my life around it. You know, I guess if, if I was very shallow and superficial and uh, very greedy, and yes, I probably could have accumulated much more uh, material wealth than I have right now, which ain't much. Uh, however, you know, what do you what is the cost of that? You, you, you must sort of sacrifice a bit of your soul or a bit of your humanity. Um, and, you know, capital, I, I just don't make a good capitalist. Like, I don't know if I pick blueberries or apples. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. For some reason, I'm not rich, but I'm richer in different ways. I'm richer in my spirit. I'm richer in my mind. I'm richer in my heart. And those are the things that are just as important because I know we need a roof and we need money to buy things. I know I'm wor I work really hard today, okay? And I stayed up late doing videos and I'm just knackered. But I just wish that people understood that the most important thing is the people because without the people you don't have anything and it's how you're breeding these people and what you're putting in their brains and now we're really narcissistic and we think well I'll only help you if I am getting something I can't help you because I care about you and love you or I like you or whatever I'm only doing it because I'm going to get something out of it and this narcissistic society I just it's very bad at the moment I think it needs to explode and start again probably wouldn't be such a bad thing although yeah i mean i, I think in order to to move forward um in a logical sort of way yeah we're gonna have to take a few steps back but like you know the whole fiat currency thing and, and it's kind of funny because i just put out another chapter of the creature from jekyll island um which is all about that um but yeah the the whole fiat currency situation basically um it it is it is the the crux of how we've become slaves in a so-called free country without slaves. And so, I don't know. Unfortunately, it's a bit like we've sleep, sleep walked into it because I haven't spoken to you in ages, John, and my other channel's a bit more to do with crime, or that's what it was, but I've got this one case and I can't get off of it. But it's just, they've got people hooked onto cases. It's I just the whole way I see it bigger now like I thought it was bad enough and accidentally we could have got to some of these places but it's not we are pounded 24 hours a day seven days a week with this crap so basically it's probably better to walk out of it because in it you're just facing 24 hours a day seven days a week bombarded with all this stuff that none of it's true I, I agree I mean you know I'm to the point to where if the the mainstream media outlets publicize something to, to such a degree that they do then I'm instantly suspicious because, uh, you know, from, from personal experience, I know that actual important things like, for example, cures for cancer or the Federal Reserve System is a scam or really important things that lots of people are shouting from the rooftops never get a second of coverage from the media. But the really divisive and sort of silly things and the stupid things that don't make a real big difference in the grand scheme of things are uh you know they're telegraphed from the mainstream media and so to me you know if if the mainstream media is telegraphing something then instantly my guard's up and i'm pretty much incredulous it's going to take some convincing to get me to think i think we have to find out who's in control of the media because then you know who's doing it all in the united states there's five companies five that basically own all of the mass media. So that's TV stations, magazines, radios, 
And I don't know if that bleeds over to where you guys are at, but it's like Disney, Viacom, Time Warner. There's a couple others, whatever. Um, and maybe some of them have merged since my last investigation into it. But that's a big problem because... Well, yeah, what it is is, John, we've seen the videos which basically show the news readers. They might be like, just say, for instance, there's a certain word they've got to all... They're all saying it. So just say... Uh, Uptown, downtown, but they've got to say those, they'll all say it, all of them, all the news stations will say exactly those same words. Of course, you can find so-called uh, competitive news organizations, so like Fox or MSNBC, that's pretty much the dichotomy, that, that's a big dichotomy here. Um, you'll find plenty of instances where the newscasters on these so-called opposing channels will have verbatim entire stories. It's not just a word or two, it's entire stories that are verbatim, like they were definitely written by the same person. And so it, it really, it's just laughable that people are still brainwashed into believing that, you know, there is somehow a... Uh... I see it even worse than that. It's by accident through this case, okay? Basically, I can't remember her second name. I'm too tired, everybody, sorry. But her name's Amber something or other. In 2012 or 13, this was, she went over, she was an independent uh, reporter for CNN. Uh, and mm -hmm. she went, uh, well, I suppose maybe they're all independent, but anyway, she went over to Bahrain, made this documentary. Obviously, there were some things there she didn't like and she wanted to report on. And when she came home, uploading her video, whatever it is, here it is, they said, oh, no, no, you can't have that on there. And of course, then by the time I'm here, I'm watching it. She's now talking to other people, basically saying, look, what happens is these countries, all of them, they pay the Americans, whoever, whichever news ones to make the news. So make the news that we're happy. Make the news that we're at war. Make the news. that So it's all simulated. It's all lies. It's all horrible. Uh, Amber Lyon that you're talking about, familiar with her. Yeah, Amber Lyon in Bahrain. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, that was very telling. And she was fired. Um, was it CNN? Maybe. I, I guess you're probably right. But it, whatever. It's, it's irrelevant. Um, she was fired because at the time that she was doing this story ex uh, exposing uh, really severe tyranny from the Bahrain government to its own people, at the very same time, the Bahrain government was paying her the news organization that she worked for to basically create an infomercial to boost tourism in Bahrain um, as if it were a news story. And they don't even tell you that this is a paid advertisement by, by the Bahrainian government. They just present it as if it's, uh, you know, news that they came up with on their own volition. So there was a conflict of interest between the truth that Amber Lyon snuffed out while she was over there and this narrative that the uh, media wanted to push or was being paid to push. And so, of course, she got the ax and uh, she was pretty vocal about it. And, you know, uh, I remember years ago, she also stated that this had come. A lot of this had now come because Obama changed the law that the media could. I mean, we know they were lying because you've got the national anthem with all those subliminal messages. If you add it, we add it. You know, I'm just, we talk a lot to you and we're watching more of your stuff because of the crime stuff and everything. But if you've got it, we've got it. But they were saying those things. To, did you know that? In, if you slow down your national anthem, well, that's what someone did. And these words come up like government is God. Um, uh, rebellion is not tolerated. Um, uh, basically, obey, consume, obey. consume, use, consume. <laughs> and uh, obey, obey. And that's what it said yeah. in the national anthem. That was in the 60s. Uh, so strange about that is uh, I remember a time when the television stations uh, did not air 24 hours. And, you know, that, that lasted a few years into my early years. But they would sign off at the end of the night at like 11 or 12 or whatever. And that pretty much all the stations played this sort of generic national anthem, you know, where they, they had the words of the national anthem displayed on screen. But as those words were being sort of wiped out, you know, faded out so that the next set of words could be displayed, they had these little subliminal messages where, yeah, I mean, so, you know, how many people saw that over and over again? So that's the thing about subliminal messages. It doesn't necessarily work very well if you just are exposed to that once or twice. I was a bit concerned, you know, rebellion is not tolerated. Rebellion is not tolerated. Obey, consume, just like the film, you know, when he takes his glasses off. And then government yeah. is God. Government is not God.
it does appear that that sort of a mantra has stuck with a lot of people <laughs> because, you know, if you watch something like that every night for 10 years, maybe it'll seek in, a, uh, you know, seep in a little bit. That's, I mean, why else would they? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying, that we're just one great big experiment in someone else's game. If you, if you start looking into subliminal messaging, um, people will sort of poo-poo it and they, they give you this anecdote about this guy who owned a movie theater and in the middle of a movie, he flashed a frame or two of buy Coca-Cola or eat popcorn. And according to this guy, the sales of Coca-Cola and popcorn skyrocketed up in his particular uh, theater when he did this. Now, now they say that that was a hoax. However, when you look at the, for example, the amount of money that's spent on a Super Bowl commercial, um, they spend tens of millions of dollars for a 15 or a 30 second ad during the Super Bowl. And to say that sort of getting into people's heads with subliminals or even very uh, either covert or overt advertisement doesn't work and is a waste of time is just absurd. I mean, why, you know, why would these super successful corporations just throw gobs and gobs of money away at advertising if it didn't work? I think it happens because I remember we were watching a film once and we slowed it down and we could see the same thing. Suddenly this image comes up just for a second. This is what I'm finding on the Watts case. Just for a second, just for a second, there's these things. But what it is is on this sort of deep fake stuff, when people sort of talk about when they manipulate videos and that, they say, slow it down because they cannot cover up all the mistakes. There's going to be mistakes in there, thank God. There's mistakes so you can see them. So you know for sure that it's not real. You know, the thing is, so the human eye and mind uh, sees in about 28 frames per second. So any less, so say half that, 14 frames per second of an animation will look very choppy. Uh, 28 frames per second will look like an like a good animation, although a thousand frames per, per second doesn't look much better than the 28 frames per second, right? So the question becomes then, why are they making all of the new digital televisions at hundreds of frames per second if it really doesn't make a difference to what we perceive and what we see? Unless you start to realize, well, wait a minute, that means they've got 80, you know, 80 frames in a second that they could potentially be... Uh, you know, seeding our minds with ideas that they want us to have at a later point. And yeah, the, the national anthem on sign off on those old, uh, you know, those old television sign offs uh, is, a, is a really good example of the sort of things that they do. Although I, I think in our, our sort of modern era, um, they've come a long way. I mean, things that they push, they also have very overt things that they push with their narratives. And it is, um, it's to manipulate people's minds. It, it is indeed a form of mind control. Do you know what? This this is what they did here. They do it all and people don't even realise what the adverts are doing. But for instance, someone was talking about it. They were laughing about it because they were saying, look, they're showing you that new television and how wonderful it is on your television. And then, of course, it makes people go and buy it. But he said, why do you need to buy it if it looked good on your television? But you see, the, the psychology is, oh, I need one of those. I've got to go and buy a new one. But if it looked okay on your telly, why did you need a new one? And that's the psychology they've got us at. Oh, look, that through your television that you're watching looks so much better, but it's on your telly. Consume, so, I mean, consume, consume, see? Consume. So, I mean, look at, where they, look at where they take it, though. They're not just trying to sell us things. They, they try to sell us on ideas. So, like, uh, for example, this whole kerfuffle with, uh, well, I call her Greta Storm Turds, but uh, I think it's Greta Thornburg. Um, basically calling us the, the children are striking from school. Like, wow, why didn't I think of that when I was skipping class? But yeah, they're striking from school to basically go and preach about climate change when in fact, you know, everybody knows that this generation has the largest carbon footprint of any in the past. And they're basically wanting, you know, wanting people to do something about climate change. And what that boils down to is they want the government to tax people more. And, you know, that is what it boils down to. And they use these. Do you know what? If they really, really, really were thinking about the environment, we would have had some kind of electric car by now, especially as we had it at least 100 years ago until they destroyed our infrastructures. And then when we come out of that, we've got petrol and oil, the TV, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, right. you know, like, if they're really caring about the environment, 
I mean, right now, there's this sort of rumour that diesel's going to be taken away. But diesel, you get more to the gallon. And I don't know, I like diesel cars. But now, if you go well, to petrol, you get less to your gallon, but it's well, worse it's for not. the environment. Like, they don't care. They're just making it worse for them. They're making it, because they you have to consume it. Like, well, the, if they really cared, we'd be in electric cars, wouldn't we? It was invented in the 1800s and was designed to run on peanut oil. Peanut oil, right? And even, I believe it was Henry Ford designed a car entirely out of hemp that ran on hemp-based gasoline. And so now uh, the, the whole shtick is that, oh, we need to find alternative energy sources. We can't stay on petroleum forever. But it's, it's ridiculous because if they were actually trying to find alternative energy sources, then, you know, we could have been running diesel engines on peanut oil for the last 150 years. So the, the concept that, that, you know, people are trying to save the environment is, is absurd. And in fact, you know, the, the, the elephant in the living room is the fact that the United States dollar is backed by nothing except for petroleum worldwide. So that's where you get this term petrodollar. And so there's vested interest for the elites to keep everybody addicted to petroleum. There is no interest in them allowing us to have free energy or natural fuel, fuel sources. And so, but, you know, this whole thing with Greta storm turds is, uh, you know, it's media manipulation at its finest. And I mean, they're, <laughs> she's turned into one hell of a meme pretty much overnight, though, hasn't she? Right. Mm. It's just it is so sad, though, isn't it? Because they're always pointing the finger at us. But the reason we've got it is because of them. Double whammy for the people. Exactly. And then using children in this psychological battle against us, I mean, that is the depth of depravity, isn't it? Like using children to get into our heads and make it. Wow. I mean, I mean, just think about that for a second. Let that sink in that this is this is mind control. They're trying to sway public opinion en masse by uh, pulling on people's heartstrings through the television. So, uh, Yes, that is exactly the answer for this case I've been trying to tell you about, the Watts case. That's exactly what they've done for that one. It's not just that one, though. It's all yeah, cases. But with the Watts case, they've given us earlier. everything. No, they haven't given us everything. But in a sense, the public feel like they've had everything. We've had their autopsies. We've had the discovery document. We've had everything from the discovery document. And we've had video upon video from their personal life. It's been all over the news. It's like consuming people's lives until that day when someone kept going on about, oh, yeah, he had a mistress, absolutely. she was helping him on the drive take the bodies of the children out. And since then, we learned the children didn't die at the house. He killed them afterwards. Yeah, everybody was convinced. We were all convinced. He was dragging the bodies out, but I didn't see that. I saw children coming out. And um, at one point, there was three Chris Watts on the drive. And what it was is, Patricia was the one. I'm not saying she was maybe the only one, but she suddenly went, Karen, look, the discovery document says that he was there for 10 minutes, but we get an hour, we get a video for an hour, and not just that, it's dark, and the sun is just about to pop there, you know, like, we, we go through this whole hour of time, and yet the discovery document said he was there for 10 minutes, and it goes on and on, and I just, when I started looking into that drive footage, it just blew my mind, I made, well, 20 videos on it. You know, when you've when you find discrepancies like that in official narratives, it, it makes it fairly obvious to anyone that, wow, these these people are up to some like there's some there's some shenanigans going on here. But if you if you bring that to light and talk about it in a public forum, then, of course, you're labeled as a crazy conspiracy theorist. And, you know, really, though, this this sort of thing, you know, with these high profile what for questioning what they're doing to us or seeing through the veil only do you have people distracted with uh really something of no consequence that seems to be fabricated at least in some degree but also uh when, when you focus on these sort of murder mysteries and there's a lot of shows like csi and uh you know new detectives and such where you know, people that consistently watch these murder mystery shows become very paranoid people and studies have shown, and I don't, I don't know the numbers, but I looked into it, that people who watch a lot of these sort of murder mystery things on TV 
have a false sense of how dangerous the world actually is or how dangerous people are. Like they believe that crime rates are thousands of percents higher than they actually are. Because, you know, if you watch CSI or whatever for a, a marathon, God, man, it seems like everybody's out to kill you. You know, you need to be setting up alibis everywhere. And, uh, you know, it's like your buddy calls you over to his house. It's like, you know, yeah, they're sort of romanticized. Hey, let, let's let get let's get home to watch house. the police, like... the, the, the criminal story. People can't wait to get home to watch it. And they're excited to watch a romantic version of death and whatever. You're going to leave fucking skin cells everywhere. And who knows, right, later on down the road. So it, it is, um, you know, it is it is a depth and advanced mind control do you know what that's that's one of the saddest things and it took me even a while john on this case because i wasn't expecting you know like i told you we know that what they're doing now with even from the national anthem but i wasn't expecting to see it in every single thing we watched but this one day i realized they were supposed to be taking these sheets from this house and what it was is as they were going off to be forensically tested and everything all the police officers had on were black plastic gloves they didn't have white covers on or anything because you know, they can then pass their DNA on, can't they? Like, hairs fall out. Like you said, skin. But for that reason, these officers should now have been in white, you know, forensic things. And they weren't. They were just walking around picking the sheets up with what plastic gloves on. Right. Well, like, what I was going to say was, like, look at, uh, in, in Connecticut, there was a pretty high-profile school shooting that everybody knows about. But I dare not say the name of it for fear of being uh, censored. Um, you know, there were some... Yeah, I don't want to do that. So there were supposedly, you know, and whether it's true or not, you know, I'm not going to pass judgment, but there were supposedly dozens of dead bodies in a school and there was no sort of uh, forensic investigation that, you know, you got uh, police officers and people just marching around the place. Do you know what? I've come to the conclusion that these things probably do place. happen, but they didn't happen for the reason they didn't happen the way you thought it did or what you're being told that's the difference well and, and you know in that particular case it does appear that it was entirely fabricated you know and there's others but like that one in particular you know and, and no disrespect to anyone's family or whatever but it does appear that it was entirely fabricated however even if it wasn't it yeah yeah what i mean is the narrative of it's a bit like you know when they told us with 9 11 we went to the we went to war in in the middle east to find out that Saddam and you know Libyan, they their countries are in a much nicer way than we were. They had running water, education, medication. They weren't bankrupt. You know, these places were sort of sporting five star hotels for holiday complexes. They were doing great. So they were the baddies. We had to kill them all off, and then we learned actually they weren't. We're the baddies. It's the, that's that's what you mean. You know, like we all think. You imagine how many people when those buildings came down. Yes, let's kill them. They've made us hate a race of people for nothing because they did to do it. It's all it's all a lie. Those are the things. Yeah. So it did happen. Those buildings did come down, didn't yeah. they? People did die, but not for the reasons that you thought. I saw a survey that was done recently where it, I think it was more than half of the people surveyed had no idea that that Building 7 came down on, on that day. And Yeah, do you know what? You Americans talk about that a lot. You know, those that are awake or realise that, you see, we obviously saw it quite a lot on Sky News with that BBC reporter standing in front of a building she says is dropped, is still there for her or whatever because they were the wrong timing. So we've seen that raw or less from the beginning when it happened but they didn't tell you did they about this do you see what i mean the americans don't know isn't that weird and the americans well, don't really know about building I seven heard, well i i heard i heard about that and the way that they sort of snaked out of it was they said that uh, what was behind her uh or like she it was pre-recorded and she was talking over the recording of the tower coming down uh, even though it was aired before the tower actually came down, they, they sort of did a little Jedi mind trick to worm their way out of it in terms of the American people, because a lot of people actually saw that. And, and it wasn't just one channel, but they called that they claimed that the tower was falling. It was like 15 minutes before it actually did. Hey, do you know something? I, I, I spent years of my life looking at that. And then with my knowledge now about how they completely lie to us in footage, what I did was I slowed down some of the footage of the building coming down and I never saw it before, even though I knew that it wasn't the way they said and so forth. You can actually see on the footage that the building, 
the, with with the um, antenna. There's a big the build, you know, like in Building Seven, where the top of the roof suddenly does a ripple as if some somebody's running their hands across a piano. You see, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then the building goes yeah. ding, 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 and then it drops. Well, that's what happened on on um, yeah. you know, that's that's what you were seeing on Building Seven. You were seeing that. You were seeing this. And you, oh, sorry, on the Twin Towers. You were seeing it on the Twin Towers the same. The rippling effect happened. The antenna started to go. And I realised that I was watching that, that Twin Tower actually collapsing from the top down. Mm. Right from the top. Yeah, yeah. It collapsed from the roof yeah. down. Not well, where the supposing yeah. plane went in. Not half well, that bit there did yeah. it. It actually started collapsing from the very top down. Yeah, with with no resistance. I mean, you know, the, the evidence there is staggering that it must have been, yeah, it, it had to have been a controlled demolition. I mean, steel, uh, steel structured, reinforced steel structures do not just fall down into their own footprint because of even a, you know, even a large airplane hit. Now, Tower 7 is a horse of a different color because it wasn't even hit by anything. It just had some office fires. And of course, it came down free fall speed, landed in its own footprint, uh, you know, controlled demolition all day long. And yet 20 years later, all, pert near, almost 20 years later, there's still people out there who will argue with you when you say there's something wrong with this official narrative. And, you know, like I said, half of them don't even realize that three uh, reinforced steel frame structures came down that day and only two of them were hit. Do you know what? It's even worse than that, really, John. It's worse than that because because of that day, and because of the damage, the whole seven buildings went that day. The whole complex went. So it's not even building seven. It's everything was so damaged that the whole thing had to be knocked down. So they got rid of the whole complex that day. But not any of the other buildings. None of the other buildings. They still stood. Well, and it it gets crazy because you you look at the uh, synchronicities with. Well, and of course, the, t the Building 7 had the, uh, I believe it was the CIA's command center for New York at the very top. And so, you know, isn't that kind of a coincidence and, and very convenient uh, for the CIA that uh, if there was any sort of evidence of them uh, choreographing this whole thing, which is a possibility, um, it was all destroyed in the, in, you know, in the, uh, the first time ever that a steel frame structure comes down because of office fires. Huh? There was an, a, a court case waiting to happen with one of the electricity companies. You know, there was more. All these cases, every bit of the information got destroyed because it was in that building. Yeah, interesting. Well, and then, of course, you have all of the, uh, the insider trading signatures with the stock market where people were basically buying um, insurance against their uh, stocks doing poorly. And the sales of this sort of default, it's called, you know, whatever it's called, default, or I forget the term, but it's basically insurance on your existing stock. The sales for that sort of interest, like, went up thousands of percentage points the day before or the weeks leading up to it, which is, you know, it, it proves that there was uh, advanced knowledge that this was going to happen by insiders. Uh, a few people profited from it greatly, and most everybody got the shaft. Um, but, like... <laughs> You know, the, the whole thing is, again, anything, as I said before, anything that the media is pushing out front and center, um, automatically now my guard goes up. I'm skeptical because um, they, they have a narrative they want to push. And usually it involves at least some degree of uh, deception, if not, you know, complete fabrication on their part. So, it's awful, isn't it? Yeah. When you know the truth. But I'd still rather be awake and know the truth than not, because... Like I said, it's like watching that advert when they're telling you that that television is really good when you buy it, but it was looking good on yours and you didn't realise it. The whole project for a new American century thing. Are you, you familiar with that? Well, going back to the, you know, the whole Twin Towers thing, are you familiar with the project for a, a new American century aspect of it? Okay, so Project for a New American Century was like um, a neo-Republican, neo-conservative think tank that was uh, run by like Paul Wolfowitz, uh, I believe Henry Kissinger, um, you know, all the Bush cronies that ended up, you know, staffing his cabinet, basically. Well, it was a couple of years before uh, 2001 happened. Um, they had basically wrote in a document entitled uh, Rebuilding America's Defenses, 
that they wanted a catalyzing event that would catapult America into the next phase of their basically war domineering plans, like a new Pearl Harbor. And, you know, it wasn't just a shoot up. Yeah, a few short months after uh, W. Bush gets into office, we get exactly what they sort of were begging the universe for prior to them getting into office. So, you know, it, it's, it screams of uh, premeditation. It's evident that at least some elements of the United States government were implicitly involved, not only in, you know, the actual event, but also making sure that NORAD or the, uh, you know, our, our air defense systems were offline that day. I mean, it is just so many different aspects of it that it really, you know, I wouldn't even call it circumstantial evidence. I would call it legitimate, actual evidence. Uh, but just so many instances of... The planes are going in. In your brain. Yeah, how many of us, I know there's young people maybe going to listen to this that don't remember it, but anybody that does, remember time after time, day after day, these planes going into the building, they replayed it, replayed it, replayed it, replayed it. Yeah, well, and now, you know, it even appears that there probably uh, may have not even been any planes that day. Like, I used to think that that was ridiculous because I saw the planes on TV, right? But now I've, I've looked into it more over the years, and I can tell you, I'm pretty sure that there probably weren't even any planes that flew into that building that day. Yeah, same sort of thing as they've done with this Watts case. They're just playing and it's all a game. I mean, if you only got to go to Pilots for Truth, they will tell you that you cannot fly a plane basically at sea level at nearly 600 miles an hour because of the air density. Right. You just cannot do it. And then what they did was... Even though they, I don't know if these pilots had actually passed their tests, but they were, they were training, but they'd done, each one had done many hours of training. So they hadn't just picked someone from, you know, like, who'd only done a couple of hours. They picked experienced, almost ready to pass their test people. None of them, not one of them could hit the Twin Towers, not one of them. The only way they could get the plane to hit the Twin Towers in the simulator was to put it at landing speed, which is what, 30 miles an hour? 40 miles an hour? How fast do you huh? think planes ta are when they take off? How fast do you think they go? When they take off or when they land? Uh, uh, maybe like 100. I don't know. I mean, I'm, that's just... You know, like a plane, say, that's got propellers but seats 100. They go about 80 miles an hour. And then the bigger planes, yeah. 100. But that's not fast, is it? It's not that fast. Yeah. No, not at all. It makes you feel like you're going to be taking off in a jet, you know, like with the noise and everything. It's 100 miles an hour. Well, and, you know, the thing is, though, historically, the, these uh, these people that get into power and pull stunts like this, because there have been conspiracies throughout history. You know, that's that's one of the elements of warfare is this is deception. Right. And so you look at things like the Gulf of Tonkin incident that got the America into the Vietnam conflict. Um, I mean, it's just there's tons of them. Um but historically, what happens is, as long as they can get away with it at the time and, you know, woo the public into consenting, you know, manufacturing public consent for what they're doing, it really doesn't matter to them if 15, 20, 25 years later they get caught because, well, nothing, nothing ever happens to them. You know, it, so they're, they're sort of acting with impunity. Hey John, do you know anything about do you know anything about like green screening and stuff like that? Because I'm very shocked that a lot of these people you just slow their footage down and you can see they're all wearing glasses which do not appear when it's playing at full speed. When it's playing at normal speed, you don't see them, but when you when you slow the footage down you do, but you won't believe it. I even saw President Kennedy in glasses. Yeah, they look they could almost look like what you're wearing in your picture, but they're for other reasons. They're other kind of glasses. And um the restraint what I'm trying to tell you is you slow the footage down, you can see these people, they've all got glasses on, even back to the sixties. So what are they doing? Hologramming? Virtual reality? What is all this? It's been going on for know, years. Never, That's what I mean. Even President Kennedy. I've, never, I've got a video on my channel on this. Ch I've, never, I've never, I've never seen that. But I, you know, I'm not saying it isn't so. But I, I just, I can't comment on something that I haven't seen. But you know, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, you're in one of the yeah. flattest places ever, aren't you? At the moment. You know, it seems just about as flat as everywhere else, doesn't it? Doesn't yeah, and is it that you're trying to get to California then? Is that where you're going? 
yeah, that's what we're going to be the end destination for now. Um, but you know, I may wait till after the winter. I don't know. So things are are sort of still up in the air. It's it's been a it's been a rough few months, you know. But we're we're hanging in there and we're doing all right. And Lily's doing good too. So you know, no complaints. So how long have you been in Kansas then? Uh, let's see, a couple of months. Yeah, a couple of months. We just got back into my. Uh, yeah, it was. It it's cooled down now considerably. But uh, when when we got here, it was dreadfully hot. I was sort of expecting it to be a little bit milder than where I've been used to, you know, living. But man, it's just been one hot summer. Did you did y'all have a really hot summer this year too over there? Um, no, not like last year. But it's carried on a bit till it went a bit cold in August, and then September came, and we've had a few nicer weeks. But we're coming up for the end of September, you know. The trees are wanting to drop their leaves, and it's okay at the moment. Uh, it's just weird weather here, too. Like, yesterday it was, like, 55, and then tomorrow it's going to be 90. So, <laughs> yeah, well, and I don't know what that is in Celsius. Yeah, well, Fahrenheit. So, yeah, 55 Fahrenheit one day, and then two days later it goes up to 90. So, yeah, weird, weird weather. But, hey, I, you know, never lived here before now, so I don't really know what the, the baseline norm is, so still sort of feeling my way out or feeling it out I guess you could. well no what 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 happened was is my uh, long and short of it was my google account got hacked and I couldn't get into it for months so I just got back into my google account um like maybe maybe a month ago if that I think well yeah the first stream I did was on the third of this month so I haven't even been back online on my google account my main youtube google account for uh, about a month um, I was offline for a couple of months because I had I could not access my my Google account. So yeah, uh, you, you know, uh, I'm not sure what happened with that because the like the last time I talked to Bob and Jaron was the last Globebusters episode that I did with them, and at the end of that episode there was a, a bit of a kerfuffle between Bob and Jaron about uh, well basically gravity and what is up and down. And so it, it, the whole thing got sort of childish. And then the very next week, I had to move out of state. Well, no, I'm sorry. The very next week, they canceled the show, even though I was sitting down ready to do it. And they canceled it. Fine, whatever. Last minute, they canceled it. No problem. The next week, I had to move. And this all happened within a, a short time frame. Then after I moved, that's when I got locked out of my Google account. So I couldn't really do much of anything. I also factory reset my phone because my cell phone had been closed, okay, believe it or not. And so I reset it and I couldn't get back into my Google account. So I couldn't, you know, resync any of my contacts. So I had no contacts. And um, then the next thing that I hear from Bob, and I haven't spoken with him in months, is he's basically pretending to be an expert on my situation and giving me sort of uh, rhetorical advice broadcasting it on the airwaves and I haven't even talked to this fucking guy in months. Right. So I'm like, you know, whatever, that's cool, man. I just, I don't like dealing with fake ass people, man. And you know, that kind of thing. And I'm not saying that Bob is a fake person or anything, but if you, if you haven't spoken with me in months and you're going to go out broadcasting basically insinuations and, and uh, rhetorical advice for me, uh, it kind of pissed me off a little bit, but you know, no hard feelings, man. I ain't sweating it or anything, but uh, that that was the deal with that. You know, you know so basically nothing happened, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened, to be honest with you. I really don't. You had other stuff in your life to sort of sort out, didn't you, as well, really? So maybe, you know, you took some yeah. time out for yourself as well then. Yeah, well, it was a really tough time. Uh, so like basically the the place that I had been renting for a year and a half, uh, my landlady was pretty old, and she was a bit senile, okay? And so apparently what happened was uh, whomever had power of attorney over her, so, like, I, I believe it was her daughter-in-law, maybe her daughter, uh, sold the property out from under my landlady to a real estate firm. And so one day we get a knock on the door. Actually, no, we got a call telling us basically what I just iterated to you. And then they came over and introduced themselves and told us, you know, you won't be paying your rent to Barbara anymore. You'll be paying us, this law firm, a real estate firm. 
and gave us the address where to mail in the checks. And then about two or three weeks later, um, every single property that Barbara owned, and there's a lot of people that, that rented out from these properties, like for example, in one house, there were three different tenants. So had the downstairs, which was one tenant place, you know, a couple live there. Then upstairs on the right was my tenant place. And upstairs on the left, there was another tenant. So one house had three different tenants in it. And she had like 10 or 15 houses in uh, historic Sanford. And so every single person that rented from her, there must have been like 100 people, got letters on their door one day from the law firm saying that uh, we had to vacate the premises or be con by X, Y, Z date or be considered holdover tenants. And so, you know, I probably could have fought all of this in the courts, you know, with the magistrates, but, you know, I was like, hell with it, you know, whatever, we, we decided to move. So that that was all sort of coming down the pipeline when the, the ridiculous drama started happening with Globebusters that I was not a part of, by the way. And so I'm not really sure um, I'm not really sure what happened with that, but you know, that's cool. I just, you know, I don't like when people, um, it, it really kind of pissed, pissed me off when, when someone would go out and, and pretend to have been in communication with me as if they have some sort of a, uh, you know, perspective on my situation when still to this day, I haven't talked to fucking Bob since the last episode of Glowbusters that I did. So yeah, there, there it is. You know, it kind of, kind of weird man but hey what can you do sometimes it's, it's a bit weird, hard man. when you go more public with your life yeah. doesn't it really other people see it you know we don't see you know the chat room comes the same well, things could happen to the chat room <laughs> but we well, won't well, ever well, see well, it or well, know well, it but people well, know well, about well, your stuff and it just though. is all public isn't it it's not nice we've all had our fair share of people talking about us publicly well, well then i'm I'm more of an open book than a lot of people that are out there on social media. I mean, people know things about me that, you know, most people would never tell anybody. I, I make it public. But the, the thing is, though, when rumors start getting spread and then people that are supposed to be your friends contribute to that animosity and contribute to those rumors from a complete position of ignorance, no less, that pisses me off. So I'll give you an example of what I would not do. Um, I've met Bob on one occasion. One occasion, that was in Denver for the Flat Earth 2018 convention. And um, that's the only time I physically met him in person is on that occasion. And so for me, from where I'm sitting, I would never presume to start giving Bob life advice. Like I could probably tell him from meeting him, uh, he probably needs to stop eating all the pork chops or something because he's a bit overweight and his cholesterol is probably high. But I would never do that. And I kind of just did. But I, I'm doing it to, to make a point that I am in no position to give Bob life advice or, you know, re even rhetorically. And um, for me to do so would be unthinkable to me. And so I, I just don't understand where Bob felt like he he was in a position to do the same. I have to say, though, uh, to, to like what you, well, how you feel about what's happened to you. You know, when they took the channel away, there was so much infighting. And then there's these people with these big fat egos. And, you know, like for me, I stepped back for a while. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to come back, to be honest, on Hangouts. Because, you know, like me and Patricia, I mean, I know I'm talking a bit more today. But me and Patricia, we sat there for hours listening to people. And some of them, they turn on you. People who keep going, I love you, Karen, I love you. And then they, we watch them do it. They obviously can't handle things. Well, now, so are you talking about individuals? Yeah, or, just so people. Just not saying anybody in particular, but just people. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, and yet, Patricia and I yeah, sit there for I mean, hours yeah, okay. listening to well, people, even if they weren't yeah, our favourite I mean, subject. We still had our platform for them to say what they wanted to say. Right. That's, I, I mean, that's one thing I like, I like about you, John, is that yeah, we, do have a, I mean, we do have a discussion. A lot of these people, they just want to talk at you. They don't want to talk with you. Well, you know, the thing is, though, you know, coming out as a flat earther in 2014 or 2015, rather, was not as trendy as it is today. And so, you know, my, my whole thing on it is if I really gave a damn what people thought about me or what people yelled at me, then I never would have come out as a flat earther and we wouldn't be having this discussion at all, you know? So, you know, let them throw, let them throw stones, let them throw their cabbages and tomatoes. And at the end of the day, man, you know, I, I'm just, 
I'm do I do what I do because I see injustice and I see deception and I see just ridiculous, almost comical things going on in the world. And I, I like to talk about them and point them out. And, you know, flat earth is sort of the granddaddy of them all. Um, but, you know, in terms of what people think or, you know, the thing is, I don't, I don't understand why people don't even understand that. We're not just talking. To be a flat earther, it's not just about the piece of land. None of us know exactly what shape it is. We know we're not spinning and moving. Um, you don't know if it's square or round yet or whatever, that side of it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not just the land. It's the, it's the whole thing. It's about spirituality. It's about how you are as a person. It's about people, community. It's about trying to help someone as best you can. It's about other people. It's about... I would say that it's about, is the information that you are reporting good information or bad information? And that's not really a subjective thing. I mean, it can be in, in certain shades of it, but really, is, is the information that I'm putting out there good or bad? If you think it's bad and it doesn't resonate with you, then, then don't watch it. You know? Go away. But if it does resonate with you, then, then you know, we've made a connection and mission accomplished. Um, but, you know... To, but to judge people's information on how they look. This waking up, we're still at the talking stage. There's nothing in place to take anything over. We're still in that global life and we're still at the talking stage. So that's where we are. And I thought we were supposed to be making communities. Well, you know, here's, let me put it in perspective this way. Okay, here in America, they've been poisoning our water with uh, fluoride for decades. Okay, and lots of people know about it, and lots of people are vocal about it. You won't hear shit about it on the news, of course. This is just in underground sort of uh, channels, right? Uh, but if we can't even get them to stop poisoning our water, what are the odds that we're going to get them to stop teaching the globe lie? You know, I mean, it's just, I, I don't even know if there is an end game other than trying to wake as many people up as we can along the way. You know what I mean? Because to, to have delusions of grandeur. Yeah, because once the consciousness changes, once the conscious, I mean, it's a bit hard for us where we are now to think, well, listen, this is what has to happen, everybody. You just do not vote. If everybody stopped voting, they'd have no power at all. Well, you, you know, I don't know about that because I believe that they could just fabricate numbers anyway. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's true. But you know what I mean? Though? Yeah. Suddenly the, the polling thing and nobody was voting and everybody, it's like turning your back on them. You have to sort of, it's like turning that television off and then going and doing something else. Well, you know, a lot of people that are in the so-called truth community fell for the whole Trump Backle, right like trump is the 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 people of the man you know the man of the people and uh, he's gonna get he's gonna drain the swamp when the motherfucker is the swamp excuse my language but uh okay so you have truthers that are coming out and and promoting trump as he's you know he's the people's candidate but I, i'm sorry anyone that is put on a pedestal by this mass media uh, corporations cannot be trusted and anyone who runs for a public office who is not running against the federal reserve for starters they're they're either complicit or they are inept and neither one is going to represent me so uh, you know the idea that do you know what i think onto that with what with what you were so, saying right uh, you know, the idea because that, i realize uh, now that everything we watch is a lie on that on the television everything the news everything the biggest thing that Trump could have done for everybody was to reverse Obama's law about lying to us. And then if they're supposed to be these public, um, you know, like these people have been arrested, you know, ex-presidents and all that bit, why not is this not done publicly? If it was real, it'd be done publicly. It's been done privately. It's been done just like before. So we're never going to know what's really going on. And is it really going on? And is it, is it just another game? But it, I mean, it never ends, though, because Obama was elected running basically against the Bush administration and their tyranny. And, and he made claims that he was going to investigate into 9-11 and he was going to do this, that and the other. All he did was uh, basically accelerate the same exact policies that Bush had put into place before Bush. You had Clinton and, you know, Clinton was, <laughs> you know, governor in Arkansas during the time when uh, the, the CIA and the DEA were importing cocaine, heroin, and marijuana into Arkansas with the governor's approval, it appears, uh, and exporting guns out to the Contras. And so, you know, it, if you keep going back to these presidents, 
it's it's just absurd and it's so obvious that these people <laughs> do you know what's really weird as well john so you look back at it everybody laughed at reagan and he was probably the last best president you've ever had well i mean is he's not part of this game thing it was when bush senior came and nobody noticed that he's going one world order yeah, no, I mean, in, in, in my book, Reagan was a puppet just like all of them. You know, they, they put the puppet on the string and, you know, which which puppet do you like better, the the red one or the blue one? But the, the puppet master is the same in both cases. It's two wings of the same beast. And they use this false dichotomy to mind control people into thinking that we have a choice when it's like, you know, would you rather be eaten by a lion or a den of wolves? You know what I mean? It, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference. Like, you're still going to be dinner. I'm never voting again. I bet you haven't even voted, but I'm never voting again. No, I don't vote. Uh-uh. Hell no. Because I, I don't want that on my conscience. I'm not going to participate in a system that is set up to enslave us. Why would I ever do that? And so, like you said, I mean, I can decide not to vote, and you can decide not to vote. But if everybody fails to decide not to vote, then basically, you know, we are, uh, we're, we're, it's not going to, nothing's ever going to change. We are just going to be uh, under the boot of this tyrannical government that it's got to go, man. Like, you know, I don't think that not voting is the answer. I, I, I don't know. I mean, this may sound a bit, uh, a bit harsh, but people Bush and Cheney and Wolf was, okay. What, well, what if, what if they, what if they strung up George W. Bush publicly and hung him on television? Do you think that might deter future politicians from going that way? You know what I mean? Like there was a day and age where if, you, if, if a leader did the sorts of things that the Bush administration did, the Obama administration did, this administration is doing, they, well, and I better not talk about the current president that way, but they would be lined up and shot, okay? And that may deter people from going that direction later on. But the problem is, is the entire system is set up to promote these people, to prevent them, essentially make them untouchable to the point to where... Um, like I don't know, maybe some sort of a natural catastrophe has to happen before we can, um, before we can get a, a toehold back on this slippery slope. You know what I mean? Well, and you know, I don't condone violence of any sort. Uh, however, you know, if you have a legal system that's set up to, uh, I don't know, that's set up to take advantage of people and put people in prison for victimless crimes. However, on the other end of that, you have elitists that are literally getting away with stealing our wealth and sending our, our troops overseas to die in foreign entanglements, which is against the Constitution, by the way, um, to not line them up and shoot them is just going to ensure that more people like them will get into office later. It's like everything is wrong, isn't it? It's like we're in the wrong parody. I mean, a lot of Americans don't even realize that they've got two flags and actually for a, well, they probably what is it? They've only flown the peacetime flag once. The flag that's flying now is the wartime flag. So America is always been at war. I'm not saying we're not the same somewhere along the way, but I'm just saying that was a bit of a shock, wasn't it? Like, wow, what is going on here? Nobody what knows. Does the flag look like because I've never seen a bit. Oh well, in it. in the videos I saw it, it's so like you know, like you've got like, the dark red and the dark blue. This I've one's light blue. And like the color is light red, you know, it's like a, not a pink, but you know, it, everything's pastel color. It's got a different border on it. But again, how do we know? Oh, but that's what circles, wasn't it? That story the about the flags. It's like, oh my goodness. But then, you know, like, what about last January with those nuclear alerts to Hawaii and Japan? That's pretty damn nasty. So, like, yeah, well, so we're talking about like nuclear. Uh, Power or nuclear bombs? I am not aware. Just that, how could you know? When we yeah, know that so that's not the way that they've told us, even on that, imagine how it made those bomb. people, all those people in those know. countries who got that. Oh, guess what? And then they didn't talk about it afterwards. Oh, like, no, these things no, must have detonated do, somewhere. Nobody talks certain. about it. Well, and, you know, from, from my point of view, I am 100% certain. Well, you know, I'm 100% certain that nuclear bombs do not exist. They never have, never will. Um, nuclear power is a misnomer. Um, it, is, it is part of the same thing to deceive us into making nuclear bombs more plausible. Uh, but the idea of splitting a hypothetical atom... What, like going to space, you mean? <laughs> 
Okay. Like going to space, you mean? Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, if you look at the uh, propaganda that was foisted upon the people to convince everyone of nuclear bombs, it's ridiculous. Uh, by today's standards, you can clearly tell that they're using models. Um, sure, the military can put hundreds of tons of dynamite at a certain location and detonate it at once, making a mushroom cloud explosion. But you cannot put, uh, you, there's no sort of a bomb, a single you know bomb that fits on an aircraft that is going to create such a blast. Um, it is propaganda. It is theoretical. Um, as far as I'm concerned, atoms don't even exist in the way that we're taught. So, yeah, of course. Now, nuclear energy, on the other hand, that is something that is real, but it is a misnomer. Um, basically, what they're, what they're doing is they're, they're taking a radioactive isotope, encasing it into a tight area, which creates heat naturally, and they use that heat energy to essentially power turbines. Okay, so... More or less, you've got steam power, but instead of burning coal, they're encasing a radioactive uh, isotope, okay? But to call that nuclear power and to somehow equate that as proof of nuclear bombs is just ridiculous. It's absurd. And uh, yeah, so the, the idea that Hawaii or, or Japan was uh, under some sort of a nuclear bomb threat, I feel is ridiculous. Now, of course, you can have nuclear meltdown, so they call it, in a nuclear power plant, so to speak. But, um, you know, that is a far cry from uh from from a nuclear bomb okay now i watched a documentary recently about the babushkas in in russia that uh they went back to chernobyl um you know years that's where they grew up that's where they lived and they had to evacuate a lot of them were there like working in the area when the whole thing melted down and these babushkas these old women are living into their 90s and they're not you know they they may be radioactive a bit but uh, it's not like making them grow an ear on their tongue or something. Well, the, the, way, the, the way that the babushkas were telling it is there's a 10 kilometer zone around the ground zero area that they cannot live in. Like it's, you can't live there. But just 10 kilometers away, they're actually repopulating their, their villages that they grew up in. Now, the thing is, though, hardly, basically none of the men have survived. So for whatever reason, this uh, radioactive uh, decay or poisoning or whatever appears to affect men worse than it does the women because these women are really old i mean they're old uh but they're you know grow picking potatoes out of the ground and mushrooms out of the ground right there in chernobyl and they're living into their 90s so you know i don't know and look at <laughs> look at nagasaki and hiroshima as well they just don't, you need, you need a male and a female for the next generation. You can't just have one or the other. I suppose you have test tube babies, can't you? But you know what I mean? Generally, that's how most of us are doing it. So if you just eradicate one of them one way or another, there won't be any children. Yeah, that's true. Well, and you know, they're, they're playing that game psychologically as well. Um, I believe with uh, certain things in the water, um subliminal programming long-term mass mind control manipulation by the media i strongly believe that it is uh, sort of conducive that the, their narrative is conducive to making people homosexual okay and of course you know this is going to have a an impact yeah that's going to have an impact on future populations because of course you know i know it sounds very um you know, it sounds very uh, intolerant, but homosexual ho homosexual people cannot reproduce naturally. You know, as intolerant as that sounds, it is the damn truth. So, you know. They're, what they're doing is they're playing stuff in front of you, right? So they're getting you to fancy what you think is a woman, but is actually a man. So they're trying to get you to fancy your own sex. That's what they're doing by the way all these cases are. What it is, is you'll be looking at it and you'll be going... That's not a man, that's a woman. That's not a woman, that's a man. Do you know what I mean? Everybody's playing the opposite sex in these, these, these crime watch things. They're all, they're, they're, you know, like oh the man is the woman, the woman is the man. All of them, they've like cross-gendered the things. Oh my God. I've been, I've been working on my wife on this topic for about a year and a half, two years now, because she thinks that I'm crazy for saying this, but it's funny how far she's come, because today... She's in there watching a uh, documentary about Justin Bieber's uh, uh, bodyguards. And she's like, you know, I don't know, but I think Justin Bieber is a chick. 
And I'm like, dude, I've been telling you that for years, but you said I was crazy, but now it's finally sinking in. And I haven't been using any subliminals on her. This is just, she came up with this on her own. And uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, yesterday she was watching a movie called uh, The Enfield Haunting. I think that was up there in North London, a little bit closer to you. And um, she, the, the, the woman that plays the wife, she's like, dude, that is a man. And I'm like, yeah, no surprise here because, you know, they are they are putting uh, transgenders, secret transgenders in the movies. Can I tell you something? Do you know what's really alarming? Is that I suppose what it is is a lot of us are watching a lot of this stuff now on our mobile phones. And so maybe they're getting away with a lot of it because, first of all, it's on a mobile phone. Right now, I bet you because your camera's off, you're probably looking up, looking down. See, what I mean is you take your you take your eyes off the screen. It could be the children, you're cooking, you're listening to it play on your phone or something. And then you occasionally have a look, so you might not even notice things. And it's, 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 um, yeah, that's what's happening. People don't realize, uh, oh, I don't think any of them are real. I've, someone put a link that all the, there's a lot, there's a place now where they have, it's called fake, fake trials. They're making them for us. Well, here's, here's a crazy, here, here's a crazy one. So I saw this on a Transpocalypse Now channel a couple of weeks ago. Great channel. It used to be Mystery, Mystery's channel got taken down. And so he started another channel and it's doing very well. But uh, so basically the, the thing is, is the uh, United States women's soccer team won the World Cup this year, okay? which is a big deal. But the thing is, is that the entire, the entire United States women's soccer team, they're transgendered men. So, oh, my God, like, wow. Like, well, that's it. Listen, wow. the news, right? I was watching it, and what it was is they called her Angel, but Angel looked like a lady, a woman, but she had an Adam's apple moving up and down on her neck, a big one that you could see. It. This is what I'm saying, because people aren't watching their screens properly or they're watching it on a mobile. They're not noticing it. It's just the way they're doing it. Everybody can be... It's what we see. Everybody can be what, what they want to be. I'm not talking about that. Whatever you feel you are, that's you. What I'm talking about is this is a program. This is an agenda. This is something that's being done to you, whether you want it or not. It's being, you're being, you're being told that this is reality when it isn't. It's being done on purpose. Right. But, you know, I think why it's so deceptive is because of what we see. So, like, you know, if, if you're looking at the U.S., women's soccer team if you're a guy you're going to be like oh wow you know they have big boobs and nice butts so you know there you go if you're a woman you're looking at them like wow i'm never going to get hips like that i should go be a soccer player all right you, you guys call it football we call it soccer um so they you know the, the women are basically being body shamed because well women are never going to have hips like a man it's two completely different skeletal structures and so that's where i believe you get anorexia and bulimia from and you've got men who are lusting after dudes who are basically transgendered. And so it, it, it creates sexual confusion on both ends. And so, yeah, there's um, extremely... Do you see what I mean? It's not, I'm not picking out what you are and what sexuality for, just the way that they're doing this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and here in America, now they're pushing it on younger and younger kids where there's elementary schools that are basically forcing people, forcing young children to learn about, oh man, just terrible things. I'm not even going to mention them, but, you know, as par for the course, like they have to learn about all this really bizarre and devious sexual uh, preference before they're even old enough to understand or, or really even be interested in that sort of thing. And they're basically telling little kids that, you know, today you could be Johnny, but tomorrow you could be Susie, if that's how you feel. And nobody can tell you otherwise. And it's basically a crime if they do. So, uh, you know. We need to get back to grassroots of letting children, for goodness sake, be children. till they get to eight or ten or something without, I know you can't make it law and you can't be, you know, dominant on it. But what a shame the emphasis wasn't more for children. Without our children, we don't have anything. Without children, imagine this, you know, like that story. If you if you beat a child up, tell it it's ugly, useless, and stupid, how is that child going to grow up? But if you tell this one, you're lovely, I love you, and yeah, it's okay, you can be angry, because it was my fault, I made a mistake. And that child learns a totally different way of 
uh, relating and emotions, that child grows up to be totally different to the other one. The other one is our narcissistic society. I'm sorry, everybody's looking like the other child. The only way we can do it is to change it in our consciousness. It has to start now, guys. I sound like a party political broadcast, don't I? Well, that's the thing, though. I mean, that's really all we can do is we can... Um... We, we can make small changes in our own life to the people around us. And if we're lucky enough to, to have a platform on these social media sites where lots of people view, which they really don't, uh, at least in my case. But if you're lucky enough to have that, then you can you can uh, plant seeds of change in people's minds uh, by the truth. The, the truth is the only antidote to this sort of deception. And so, you know, and, and that in that regards, you know, it's, it's very I'm very optimistic and positive as long as you don't make your goals too lofty, because again, um, they, they just have ways of putting lids on these, these things, putting the cats back into the bag somehow. Um, and, you know, they've got the, they've got the, the, the ways and the, the mechanisms that they do, uh, that they use to do this uh, to a T. I mean, it is a well oiled machine. They have the biggest microphone that most people are, you know, tuned into. And so the saddest thing is the people don't know that they don't know. That's the sad bit. Yeah. Yeah, but we know that they don't know that they don't know. So, you know, it's sort of our job to uh, to let them know that we know. Yeah, we get quite persecuted, though, don't we, along the way for knowing, knowing a little bit more than them? Because we don't know everything either, but we understand and can see it. Some of us can see it and some of us can't. Um, can I just say, we've been going for, a, you know, I said that we go a bit shorter now. So we've been going for over an hour, but... Mm -hmm. Just to like end this hangout, um, John, is there anything you'd like to say for the next 10 minutes or something, you know, about where you're going, what you're doing, or your channel? Yeah, no, I, I'm just glad to be back on YouTube, man. It was very frustrating and disheartening and, and just all sorts of other negative emotions when um, when I wasn't able to get in and you know, uh, my, my devices were, were hacked and you know, I got in contact with Google and uh, apparently they were able to prevent my channel from being suicided, thank God. But, you know, I was locked out of my account for months and it's it's just good to be back in. And, um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very happy about that. Although, you know, I, I wish things would have gone differently on, on certain aspects of the, the last few months since we've spoken. Uh, you know, can't complain. I, I think it's been... Um, it's, it's been a, a life-changing learning experience, and that's really all we can uh, hope for, is to learn from life and to proceed in a better state than we were before. And in that respect, you know, things have changed. Um, I, I lost a lot of material property and, and things, but uh, on the other hand, I have, uh, I have gained strength. You know, so what doesn't kill me will always make me stronger. And uh, yeah, so doing, doing good on, on that regard my dog out here she's got leaves all over her you butt head so yeah it's a shame that you couldn't oh, maybe yeah. buy a bus you know and then keep traveling what's that it's a shame maybe you couldn't buy a bus and have your house with you and keep traveling a lot of americans I are did, doing this I did. I did i did i did i did buy a bus and as a matter of fact it was a diesel and i was working my ass off converting it into something that um that could be used for that sort of thing and of course, the city that I lived in put a big fat ticket on it that was worth more than I paid for the bus and threatened to tow it and threatened to take me to court. So I just had to sell the damn thing for scraps. Um, that was years ago. But uh, yeah, maybe another one. But man, I, I really do want a diesel, though, because you can make your own biodiesel uh, bio out of uh, oh, basically fryer grease or peanut oil or, or really any, any sort of oil that, uh, that a diesel engine will take without having to go the way of petroleum. So yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, so your plans are to go to California, so you're going to be back streaming a bit more now, so that's good, because, yeah, I did, you know, unfortunately, yeah, but really good that you're back then, John. I'm really happy for you. Um, Patricia, Patricia, she's been very quiet this evening. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. I've been wrapping presents up for the baby shower, sorry. I've been listening, though. So what I love about you, John, is... You're always positive, even though, I mean, like everyone, we have problems and stuff. And it's just nice that you bring a bit of positivity. So thank you for that. Well, that's the only way to do it, because I'll tell you, if, if, uh, 
if, if you let the little things or even the big things get you down, it's going to be one hell of a long road to hoe because uh, life is filled with those sort of things. So yeah, no, you gotta gotta keep your chin up and and uh, keep on trucking, right? That's what I said at the beginning, John. That you know we've been friends, like, and even before, like, there were some certain times I don't think you were on Globusters for a little bit and used to come on Sun and Moon. <laughs> I really appreciated that. Do you remember a few Sunday yeah. nights you came on? But we've just been friends and we haven't worried about the politics and all that stuff. So I appreciate that with my friendship with you. Yeah, no, and I, I'm really sorry to hear about your channel getting taken down. I know that that's tough and it's frustrating and um, all those other things. Anyway, I've been on a hangout where you fell asleep and were snoring. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, at least you had the ability to mute me then. Yeah, Karen B had to mute you. <laughs> He's like, you, you started off, and you started off, but you did say you were very tired. But you started off, you were full going for it. And then you must have sat down or just like relaxed a bit. And then maybe somebody said something and the next day, I can't remember exactly now. Or maybe you set it up and you were snoring. I can't remember, but you were snoring. But anyway, that's, I got on about about 3.30 in the morning. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, when it gets into those hours, like, yeah, I, I can't. <laughs> when, especially if I'm sitting, if I'm sitting straight up or if I'm laying straight on my back, yes, I will snore. Um, but typically I sleep on my side. So I, I only snore when i'm on uh when i'm on hangouts <laughs> yeah. but then again maybe this last few months it just made you concentrate a bit more on yourself do you think You're not being able to get on the hangouts and stuff well because you were locked out and you couldn't have hangouts yeah it's made you concentrate a bit more on yourself um yeah i mean i, I guess you could say that uh but you know nothing really changed except i didn't have any sort of an outlet um I'm going to have to go and buy another guitar because I love to play guitar. And, um, you know, if I ever get complete. Yeah, you play the guitar. There's something else that people don't know about, John. He plays the guitar really well as good as well. Oh, thank you. But so like the next time I get kicked out or if I get uh, my YouTube channel taken away, I'm just going to, you know, just going to play my guitar for that outlet. Got to have an outlet, man. Oh, well, good. It'd be nice to hear you play again and can put a video up again. Patricia, thank you very much for that very nice comment. You're right, he's very positive, so I'm really pleased for him. Um, for the recording, John, we'll say goodbye, but when I stop it, we'll say goodbye to each other after the recording. I hate I hate it when we say goodbye and then they've gone before you've had a chance to say goodbye properly. Anyway, but for the recording, okay. thank you so much for coming on. It's been a while, but I've really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, I have as well, John. Not oh, listening to you, obviously, but yeah. Just wanted to say quickly before Karen turns the recording off, I love you and I hope everything goes all right for you in the future. And thank you for coming on and talking to us. Oh, well, thank you. And yeah, it's always a pleasure and I really enjoy speaking with you guys. And yeah, lo love you guys, love your, your viewers and your listeners. And hopefully um, you, can, you can build this channel up bigger and better than the other one ever was. And anything I can do to help, you know, within reason, let me know. <laughs> Not gonna, not not gonna go lining up anyone and shooting them. So. <laughs> oh, bless your cotton socks! <laughs> bless your cotton socks. Anyway, thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Mwah. Bye. Love you all.